right, hey guys, it's Miss Adelini. I'm back with our third and final video about DNA, and this one's on DNA replication, so how the DNA molecule makes a copy of itself. I'm going to try to keep this one quick. My goal is under 10 minutes, and there is a peanut butter Nutella pie that has my name on it at the end of this, so I'll try to get through it quickly for you. Um, you're on your Unit 6 Notes Packet 2, and the first question, number 32, asks, why cells have to copy their DNA. Well, the cells have to copy their DNA before they divide through mitosis. The reason they need to do that is each daughter cell needs to have a full copy of the DNA. Number 32 has to do with when the DNA gets copied, and it gets copied during the S, which stands for synthesis phase during interphase, the normal life of the cell. DNA replication takes place in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. Obviously, it wouldn't take place in the nucleus of prokaryotic cells since they don't have a nucleus. That would just take place in the cytoplasm. For number 34, please write in nucleus. And this is just a little diagram of the whole cell cycle. They make mitosis seem way longer than it actually is. Remember, that happens at the very, very end of the cell cycle. And then they've split up interphase into the G1, S, and G2 phases. Okay. DNA replication starts at points called origins of replication along the DNA molecule. Our two DNA strands are going to open up to create this Y-shaped area called a replication fork, like a fork in the road. New strands of DNA are going to be built based on each of the parent strands that are separated here. Okay, in your picture, I want you to label where the replication fork is. Where's my cursor? There it is. I also want you to label the five prime and three prime ends of each strand of DNA. Notice that these strands run anti-parallel to each other. That means they run in opposite directions. This one left to right goes from its five prime towards its three prime end. And this one left to right goes from its three prime to five prime end. So again, you need to label the replication fork and the five prime and three prime ends of each parent strand. Okay. So this would be our two strands of DNA shown in black. And as our strands open up, they form um, what are called replication bubbles where the strands are separated. In a prokaryotic cell, they have so little DNA that they really only have to open up a single bubble. But on a eukaryotic chromosome, we're going to start replication in many different places along the chromosome so that we can speed up the process a little bit. So they have many different replication bubbles with lots of origins of replication. So you should have filled in up through number 38 at this point. Now we're actually going to get into the steps of DNA replication, so how DNA is actually copied. Under number 39, you've got four steps. In number one, we have an enzyme, which is a type of protein called helicase, that unwinds our two DNA strands and separates them. It does that by breaking the hydrogen bonds between the nitrogen bases on opposite DNA strands. So it's going to chop apart those hydrogen bonds and unzip our DNA double helix. Number two, our second step, another enzyme called primase is going to take individual nucleotides and bring them into the replication fork to create something called a primer. That primer is like a tag that says, hey, this is where we're, going to, where we're going to start making our new strand. So for number two, where you wrote in primer, I might also write in parentheses tag to start the new strand. Number three, we have another enzyme, DNA polymerase, 
And DNA polymerase's job is to bring in free nucleotides that are just floating around in the cytoplasm and nucleus of the cell and match those nucleotides with the base pairs on the parent strands. So if there's an A on the parent strand, an adenine, DNA polymerase is going to bring in a thymine, a T, to bond with that adenine. Okay. So here we're actually showing our parent DNA molecule in purple. We're showing the two parent strands unwinding, and you're showing two new strands growing, and those are shown in pink. Notice that new nucleotides like this T right here are being brought in to bond with the nucleotides on the parent strand. So we're going to make a daughter strand that's complementary to each parent strand. This is just another image to show the same thing. We see our parent double helix in white and we see our daughter strands, our new strands, in black. Okay, the last step in DNA replication is an enzyme called ligase, which I think of as the glue, is going to connect any breaks in the new daughter strands. The big question is why would we end up with breaks in the new strands at all? Why would we make them in chunks? And we're going to talk about that under number 40. Once we've created two new daughter strands that don't have any breaks in them, they're continuous, we're going to wind, wait, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say here. Okay, so once we have connected any breaks in the strands, we now have our two daughter double helices. Okay, so let's look at why we have any breaks in the strands at all. So DNA polymerase can only come in and add in new nucleotides to the three prime end of the parent DNA. So here, up top, I've got my parent DNA, and we created our little tag using primase at the three prime end of the parent strand. We're then adding in nucleotides, moving towards the five prime end of the parent strand. That means we create our daughter strand, our new strand, moving from its five prime towards its three prime end. Okay, but remember, our two original parent strands are anti-parallel. They run in opposite directions. So, the leading strand, one of our daughter strands, can be built into the replication fork as these two parent strands get unwound. So we're going to build this new daughter DNA, shown in red up top, starting at the parent's three prime end and moving towards the parent's five prime end. The lagging strand, in contrast, has to be built in the direction out of the fork. It's going to start at the parent strand's three prime end, which for this one is up here, and build towards the parent strand's five prime end. Problem is, that means it has to be built out of the fork. So as these strands are getting unwound, we have to backtrack and create more and more short sections. This causes the breaks that we see in the strands, since we have to build out, backtrack, build out, backtrack. The enzyme ligase is going to actually join those sections together in order to make one continuous strand. Okay. Right, you have an image on the next page, number 41, of this whole process, and I want you to label several things. I want you to label the leading strand being built into the replication fork. I want you to label the lagging strand being built out of the replication fork. I want you to label DNA polymerase, the enzyme here and here, that's being used to create each new daughter DNA molecule. I want you to label helicase, the enzyme that's actually unzipping our parent double helix, 
and the primer, the tag that's going to start each new daughter DNA molecule. And then you're going to label DNA ligase under number 42. And that's this little box right here. It's going to be used to join together our two sections or fragments on the lagging strand. There are only breaks on the lagging strand, so we're not going to need ligase, the glue, for our leading strand. DNA polymerase is pretty accurate, but every once in a while it matches the wrong base to the base on the parent strand. So it might match a G with an A when it should have matched a T with an A. That happens in one out of every 10,000 bases that it um, matches up. We do have some enzymes that are used to proofread these errors and correct them. And because of those proofreading enzymes, our error rate drops down to 1 in 1 billion base pairing errors. So that's your new error rate in number 43. There are a couple ways that DNA can get damaged aside from errors in DNA replication. Chemicals, certain chemicals like the carcinogens found in um, cigarette smoke can damage your DNA. Also UV light, um, so if you're out tanning too much that can damage the DNA in your cells. And luckily your cells have a couple ways to fix that damaged DNA. The first is called excision repair, and that's when you have an enzyme that's literally going to chop out or excise damaged DNA. DNA polymerase and ligase, two enzymes that are normally involved in DNA replication, can also be involved in DNA repair. Once we have removed the damaged section of DNA using our excision enzyme, DNA polymerase can come in and put the correct nucleotides matched up with the parent strand and ligase can glue everything together. And that's it for DNA replication. This is a pretty complicated topic, especially when you're comparing and contrasting the leading and lagging strand. So we are going to talk about this in class as well and we'll have a follow-up worksheet. But thank you for listening. You guys are the best. All right. Bye-bye.